This is chapter 2 of Access. We're doing project 2A. This is in the Go book for Office 2010 and I'm on page 513. Okay, I've already started Access and what we want to do is we want to open an existing database and we need to go find that's kind of slow here. Okay, um, go to OneDrive and go to Access and Chapter 2 and we want Instructors Courses. I'm going to open that up. And we're going to save it. Make it basically we're making a copy of the database here and we're going to put our last name first name on the beginning of it and now we're on activity 2.02 .02, and um, we've already clicked enable content uh, in the navigation pane I want to right click the table called instructors and they want me to rename it. I'm not going to do that. Um, I've already renamed the database and so everything in this database belongs to me so I'm going to skip that part. Okay, now we're going to create a relationship. A relationship is uh, where the data in one table is related to the data in another table and the way that you do that is by finding a common field between the two tables. So they want us to open up the instructors table and this is what the instructors table looks like and then open up the schedule table and that's what schedule looks like and if we look through here first let's look at the instructors table and you see we have a way of uniquely identifying each instructor uh, with an instructor ID uh, if we go to I haven't looked at this before but I'm willing to bet that if we go to uh, design view for this uh, we'll find out that this is the little key there this is a key field a key field must be unique. You can't have the same key occurring twice in the same table. Um, so let's go back to our data sheet view here. Now let's go look at the schedule table and somewhere over here we've got uh, an instructor ID column which tells us who is teaching the class. And this is the way that we join up the two tables. If I can find an instructor ID here and then go over here and find the same instructor ID then I know who's teaching the class. And all I have to do is put the instructor ID here, uh, link it to this instructor ID over here. I think this is the number that we were looking at on that particular record. And now I know who's teaching the class. And I don't have to put all this other stuff in the schedule table. That way I only need one copy of it. Okay, so we want to close each table. So we're going to close them now. And uh, now that we know how to form a relationship between the two tables, and um, now what we want to do is we want to go to our database tools tab and click on the relationships and um, this is where you define how one table relates to another and we're going to add the instructors table I'm going to add the schedule table and then we're going to close that and it gives me a list of all the fields in each table I'm going to make it long enough so I can see everything it identifies the key field and so each item in the schedule has a unique ID, each instructor has a unique ID. Um, since an instructor can teach more than one class, uh, it's not going to be unique over here. And the way that we relate these two is we drag this to this. And we'll get this little relationships dialog box here. And this lets us um, specify a few things about the type of relationship. And uh, we're going to turn on this checkbox. And uh, referential integrity means that I can't have an instructor ID in the schedule if the instructor ID does not exist over here. Um, you, know, you can't have an ID that doesn't exist for an instructor. Uh, we wouldn't know who was teaching the class if that was the case. So I'm going to enforce referential integrity. So if I try to put in a bad instructor ID, it will not let me. Basically, that's, what, that's what's going on here. And there's a little line that gets drawn here showing you there's a relationship. And there's a one on the top of this line. And there's a little infinity symbol over here. 
and we read this as the number one, we read this as many, and what it says is uh, one instructor on this side can have many instructor IDs occur on this side, uh, which in English would be a way of saying that a faculty member can teach more than one class. Uh, and then if we go back in the other direction, um, we're saying that a class is only taught by one instructor. Okay, now I'm on activity 2.04 on page 518. And we have an option here to create a relationship report. We'll click on it. And basically, it just lets us print this out on a piece of paper. Uh, we've got some options up here, you know, typical things that you'd expect for printing stuff out. Um, and we're not going to be printing any things in this class, so uh, we're just going to close that print preview. Uh, they had you save the report. I'm not going to bother with saving the report. And uh, so we're going to close the report here. And no. And we're going to close the relationships window. And now we are on the top of page 519. Uh, I want to open the 2A instructors table. And now there's something there that we didn't see before. Uh, these plus signs were not here before. And the plus signs are there now because what we did was we linked the two tables together. We created a relationship between the two tables. And because of that, uh, Access does us a nice little favor here. And it uh, lets us click on a given instructor and it will pull up all of the courses that are being taught by that instructor. So this should match the uh, picture on the middle of page 519. And if you click a minus sign, it will collapse it again. And now we're just looking at records for professors. Uh, now at the bottom of page 519, sorting the records in a table. Uh, we've done sorting in Excel, and uh, it's pretty similar in Access. Um, turn over to page 520, at the top of page uh, 520 says, notice that the records are sorted in ascending order by the instructor ID. If you look here, uh, those get bigger as we go down the page. And let's go to the department field here. And uh, this kind of looks familiar. It looks a lot like it did in, uh, ex uh, in Excel. And we're going to sort from A to Z. And now we've got everybody grouped by department. Let's go to the Home tab and go to the Sort and Filter group and click the Remove Sort button. And it returns it to the default sort order, which is based on the primary key here, which is the instructor ID. And um, now it says, let's go to last name. We're going to try sorting by last name. And we do that in reverse alphabetical order. I'm not sure why. They're just probably showing you how it works. And um, now they're sorted by uh, last name. And if you click on other columns here, uh, the little arrow remains there so you know which field uh, the data is being sorted on. And uh, we're going to go back up here. We're going to remove the sort. And now we're back to our default sort order, which is based on the primary key. Now we're on page 521, activity 2.06. Sorting records in a table on multiple fields. If you want to sort on multiple fields in Access, you do the same little trick that we did in Excel. Um, you want to figure out what your major, um, I guess they call it the outermost sort field. Uh, that's the one that uh, normally you would think of as sorting on first. And then if there are any ties, uh, the innermost sort field will basically break the tie. Um, so let's look at an example here. Uh, we want them by department. And then within department, we want them sorted by last name. So if I go to department here and sort A to Z, I get them sorted by department. But then if I go to last name uh, and sort, then that's the key. And now the departments are scrambled. And the trick here is to sort them using the, um, they call this the outermost key, um, last. So first sort on last name and then sort on department. And what it will do is, if it finds two people in the same department, uh, it will leave them in the same order that they were in before. And if they were in alphabetical order by last name before, then it will keep them in alphabetical order when we sort by department. So let's go to department here and do an A to Z sort. 
and now let's just take a look here at all of our uh, accounting department and we have BI, BO, L, WID, um, apparently two professors with the same last name. Um, let's find another one that has, yeah, here's one with quite a few people in it. Here's the IST department. And if you go down the list here, you'll see that they are in alphabetical order based on last name. Uh, at the bottom of page 521, uh, they talk about how to print this. And we're not going to print, so we will skip that. And now we're going to close the table. And we'll save the design changes, and that will simply make sure that when we open it again, uh, it is still sorted by department, and within department, it's sorted based on um, last name. Okay, we're on number 7 on page 522 now. In the sort and filter group, click the remove sort button. So we'll remove the sort, and it goes back to its default sort, sort order, which is by instructor ID, which is the primary key. Uh, close the table, click on the X over here, and yes, and we will say uh, close the navigation pane. Um, he does this almost all the time. I almost always keep it open, but I'll close it to make him happy. And we've been going about 10 minutes now, so that's probably a good place to stop this video. We'll continue with Objective 4 on page 522.